poisonous blowfish. <laughs> you ate it, you told us before? I had sworn I was never going to, that was the one thing of Japanese cuisine I was never going to eat was poisonous blowfish, because it can kill you. I mean, come on, it's not worth it, right? Well, it's poisonous by definition. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, oh. And the hello. poison's in the gonads, but we won't go there. Oh. Wait a sec, excuse me? Oh the God. poison is in the, what we would call the gonads, is yeah. that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. another good reason not to eat it, by Don't the go way. to bed with you a poisonous blowfish. Let's not go there. Let's not. Go Do ahead. You eat that? Well, I had sworn I was never going to eat it. <laughs> Guess how I ended up eating it? A Japanese ex-girlfriend, who I had thought I was on good terms with, <laughs> apparently was trying to kill me. Took me out for poisonous blowfish without telling me what it was. For real. For real. For real. And she, the chef was like in on the joke, right? So I'm sitting there eating this fish, and they're both like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and then the chef goes, "Well, after you know, he bows very politely to in Japanese. He's like, after about ten minutes, you should begin to feel the effects of the poison, and then it will kill you quickly." <laughs> like, so what did it taste like? Thank you. <laughs> it was, Chicken. It was yeah. awesome. Really was it? <laughs> and you say the chefs put a little bit of the poison well, for a little bit? Well, apparently, yeah. The best uh, poisonous blowfish, and you got to go to like med school to get a degree to even make this stuff, right? Um, you have to have a certificate and everything. But the best chefs apparently allow just enough of the poison into the meat so that you get a tingling sensation, but you don't actually die. Here's a surprise. It doesn't even have to be fish to be sushi. Everybody's going to want their money back now, right? They go, mm -hmm. I have to be eating raw fish to eat sushi. No, you don't. The word sushi just refers to the rice that's got that vinegar sugar mix in it. So you, you can make sushi out of anything. Sashimi and sushi, two different things. And actually, again, the word sushi has nothing to do with fish, with raw fish. Sashimi is where we get the tradition of eating raw fish in Japan. That goes way back before sushi was even invented in Japan, or at least before it became popular. And get this, sashimi refers not even to just eating raw fish, but to eating any meat raw. Uh, the thing in the middle is the nigiri. What's this plastic fork doing there? <laughs> you can <laughs> point. For you, Jim? You can point, and then you can nibble on the fake grass. Okay. So these are nigiri. Those are the little packs of, of rice with a slice of fish on top. That's traditional sushi. That's Japanese sushi. That's what they always had in Japan to start out You don't with. pop that whole thing in your you mouth. Do? You yeah. do? Yeah. And, but you know the problem is, of course, here in America, everything is too big. <laughs> so, so it wouldn't be that large. And, uh, they'd they probably make it a little in, smaller. In Japan, huh? smaller. Yeah. No, a good sushi chef, actually, and the chefs I talked to told me this, they should, they should adjust the size of the nigiri depending on the customer. So if, you have, if they look at you and you've got a little tiny mouth, they should be making you a little tiny sushi. Oh, I didn't know something. Now, yeah. could you to give us the bad news on this? This green stuff right. right here, for this, those who don't know, we believe is wasabi, which is this horseradishy tasting mustard kind of and thing. And Jim, you uh, you agreed earlier when we were off the air to eat that entire ball in one bite, right? Wasn't, wasn't that what <laughs> you said? Why should today be different from any other day? <laughs> so he what's throws the, it up in the air and it bounces <laughs> off his nose. And what's and the deal with that? Okay, so this green thing right here, this ball of green stuff, it's called, we all think it's wasabi. It's not wasabi. It? It's horseradish with green food coloring. And real wasabi is different. It's a relative of horseradish. It's a plant that's a relative of horseradish, but it's very rare, very hard to grow, very expensive, difficult to work with, but it tastes fantastic. And it's not just spicy the way this stuff is. This what stuff is, is just like spicy. Real wasabi's got a nice little sweet taste to it, a complex flavor, and a little bit of spiciness, but not as much. And it's so a chances nice, are that people who eat sushi in the United States have never had real have wasabi. Have probably never had real wasabi, unless they go to a pretty upscale sushi restaurant. This is also traditional, although the nigiri is the, the, big, the main form of it in Japan, and it started out as a street snack. It was basically, we mentioned McDonald's earlier, sushi started out basically as like the McDonald's drive-thru yeah. of, of old Tokyo. Yeah, and that's what it was, these nigiri. I mean, you just eat it with your hands on the street. Is on your it way of home. Japanese origin? Uh, sushi originally goes way back to uh, northern Thailand is where it first developed as a way to oh, preserve yeah. old <laughs> fish, not fresh fish. <laughs> they would pack old fish in rice and let the rice ferment and that would preserve the fish. Now we need to talk about this one because what is that one? this is an inside out roll. You can see the rice is on the outside. That's an American invention. To mm. hide the to hide the seaweed. seaweed. Right. Is that really what it is? That's a, that's because exactly people are turned off by the notion. Well, well, when sushi first came to the U.S., uh, Americans were like, "I'm not eating seaweed paper." What are you kidding? And so they they hid it on the inside. Um, the California roll and other American rolls are being reimported in Japan as American style sushi. It's a novelty <laughs> item. <laughs> I'm so confused. You know, go figure. So I went to uh, a supermarket, went to the refrigerated case, took out a frozen pizza and a California roll. Same number of calories per serving. That is not true. <laughs> it is true. Uh -uh. It is true. I hate to say it. This orange stuff back here is ginger, right? <laughs> That's ginger, pickled ginger, also very sweet. It's got a lot mm -hmm. of sugar in it. And uh, 
So sometimes people will take a slice of this ginger and put it on top of the sushi and mix it together and eat it that way. That's not what you're supposed to do. Okay. The, the sushi chef's going to give you a look when you do that. The no. ginger is a palate cleanser between oh, different pieces. Oh, like a sorbet kind of exactly, experience? Exactly, exactly. Now, I'm taking like this piece here. Top. Now, if I dip it in the wasabi, is that totally, like, uh, inappropriate? Well, in Japan, they don't normally, at a good sushi board, they don't normally serve extra wasabi at all. Oh, because it's part of the, the deal? chef has put in the right amount in the sushi. And I cannot tell you how many sushi chefs, when I start, you know, since I speak Japanese, they tend to open up to me a little bit more, and we chat, and they roll their eyes, and they say, Americans are always covering their sushi with wasabi. Why am I getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go get that good fish at the, at the fish market? So can I do this or you not? You can't taste it. Can I do this? You do whatever okay. you want. Everybody's been asking me, you know, what's the best sushi place? Where should I go to get sushi? What do you recommend? And what I try to convey in the book is that part of what makes sushi unique is the experience of sitting at the sushi bar and interacting with the chef and having the chef suggest things for you. One of the things that makes good sushi is just how they make it, not even what the ingredients are. But, for example, a lot of sushi chefs in the U.S., they pack the, the rice really tight because Americans are kind of clumsy with eating it. You know, we pick it up and we don't know how to eat it. We're trying mm. to use chopsticks. Or anything. What I do is I take a piece, throw it off in the air. <laughs> and try to, is that okay or is that... But you want to use a knife and slice it in <laughs> midair <laughs> as it's coming down. That's okay, what that's I what do. I <laughs> but a, a sushi aficionado, for example, in Japan, would use his fingers. And it's a one-bite kind of one experience. One-bite thing, yeah. So that way the chef can pack it loosely. And your the fish first. It is? Well, that's, yeah, that's one option. The, the thing is that when the chef packs it loosely, it doesn't matter because the whole thing melts apart in your mouth. Joining <laughs> us on the phone now is sushi chef Kate Murray. She's the main character in this terrific book by Trevor Corson. How are you, Kate? Good. How are you? Wonderful. Thanks so much for calling in Jim Browdy and Leslie Gatiss here. You are, would it be considered unkind to say when you read the book, you are not exactly the most skilled student at the uh, right. California Sushi Academy. Is that a safe statement? To say the least. <laughs> <laughs> I came in with absolutely no experience. They tricked me. I thought it was going to be rice and bamboo mats, and then they gave me knives the first day. Did you like the book, Kate? I love the book, and I read it, you know, 20 times. And I still find myself occasionally just opening it up and reading a few pages and chuckling to myself and saying, ha, 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 I said that. <laughs> it's really, hey, still you know, Kate, really fun. I've never seen a woman sushi chef until I read about you. What's the deal uh -huh. with women in the trade? Well, the men, they're a little harder to uh, win over, but eventually I feel like I do. It's usually an older Japanese, maybe Hispanic, Korean, but they're all, most of them, older men. So it's really hard to just kind of come in as a, you know, little girl and <laughs> yeah. kind of expect them to let me do things, too, you know? They don't want me to mess things up, but I've kind of proved to them that I can do it, too. So have you mastered the art of sushi making? I wouldn't say mastered. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. always room for improvement, but I, I do a lot better than I used to do, and uh, I just really enjoy it. Hey, Kate Murray, thank you so much. Congratulations on your graduation and your career and forever out there in that neck of the woods we'll check you out and paving thank the way for so women much. sushi chefs across That's america right. thanks Join my kate. campaign hey kate <laughs> thanks so much for being with us kate murray who is essentially the star for lack of a better expression of the zen of fish, uh, fish trevor's uh, book you know when you first look at this book you think the zen of fish the story of sushi but it's kind of like part reality show yeah, well you know one of uh, my friends who read an early draft of the book he's like it's like a sitcom. Because <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the people in the book are kind of nuts, especially the chief instructor. By the way, you don't need to love sushi to read the book. It's a great story, too, I think. He is fun. you got to come out and meet him. You were really fun, Trevor. I haven't even told my sushi orgasm story. Oh, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> out of time. How could this be? Thanks for watching. See ya.